Welcome in short but super important series about handling files with the Databricks. And we have a six parts of that series. In the first one, we were talking about some basics like what's the difference between batch and uh, streaming and a couple of other very important things. Today, we are going to talk and see what is a DBFS. Then we will go through the DBUTs and then we will be actually coding and coding a lot with PySpark, SQL and at the end, we are going to have some really cool challenge. So let's get started. What is DBFS? And on the top right side, you see a dead boring definition of what is DBFS from the Databricks documentation. It's not mine. Try to read it at least once and not fall asleep because you may have questions about it on the Databricks certification. It's a basically an abstraction on the top of storage kind of the Unix like file system as it's written like written here. But what does it mean? So we have our cloud and in the cloud we have our files with the data and we have a Databricks which is partially in our cloud, partially not. But anyway, below, between Databricks and our files we have something what is called DBFS, Databricks file system about which we can think like about our storage in our PC. We cannot access files directly. We will be accessing them through the DBFS. And in the DBFS, we will have two types of the data. One type of the data, it will be files mounted into the DBFS from the cloud. So it's just like when you plug in the USB drive, then suddenly you have a new folder or new drive pop up in your operating system, depends what you use. Uh, so you need to mount this USB to have it accessible and we'll be mounting our files to have them accessible in the next episode. And besides, of course, our USB drive, we have some root directories. And again, depends what operating system we use. In the DBFS, there are also some root directories, meaning a default directories, which every one of us has access to. And those directories are following. Those are the most important directories to which we have access. And you don't need to remember all of them, but we'll be playing with a couple of them. A couple of them are really important. Like the first one is, so first, at the beginning, so what does it mean the Unix style file system? So for those who may maybe you are using the Windows and have never seen it, so it starts with slash and then name of the folder, slash, you can have another folder, or maybe already you can have a different type of the files. And we may have a, you, we will have a folder which is called file store where we will keep our data and libraries, especially the one uploaded through the user interface. Then something important for the purpose of the learning, those are default data sets provided by the Databricks, different data sets. I will, show you, I will show you how those looks like. Very useful for the process of learning because then you don't need to upload your own data. You can use that data to play around with the PySpark or SQL. And another folder is a Databricks results where we store files generated by downloading. And then a legacy global init script, not so important. But the last one is really important because it's a common question on the exams. So whenever we'll be creating a tables in the Databricks, manage tables, with time we'll learn what's the difference between manage and unmanage. But when we'll be creating manage tables, those will be saved in that folder, user hives warehouse. We will see how it looks like in a second. So this is important to remember. And then the last one is different ways of accessing DBFS. So we have our DBFS here and the way we can access our, our drive is first of all, and that we'll be doing today, uh, we can access that directly from the notebooks. We can also access that through something that is called DBFS Explorer. We will be also doing that today, but you need to change some admin settings to have it available for you. And on top of that, which we'll be not discussing today, but you can access it through the command line interface, uh, SDK and API. So those are also an options, which with time we will be using. And that's it when it's going about the theory. Now let's get our hands a bit dirty and we will start with checking what is a DPFS Explorer and you need to log into the Databricks just like I did and on the top right side you need to click your user and then go to the admin setting which is the second option from the top and in the admin settings you need to go to the advanced in the menu on the left right here then you scroll down and you have it here, DBFS File Explorer and enable or disable DBFS File Browser. So I have it already enabled. You will have it not enabled probably if you haven't been checking that. So just make sure that this is enabled. And once this is done, you can go to the catalog on the left, click it. And 
If you enable that option, you will have on the right top side something what is called browser DBFS. So let's see how this looks like. And the navigation is a bit awkward, but okay, nothing to complain. And you will not have access to all the folders through the DBFS Explorer, but you will see a couple of them, especially the file store. Like I have some sample data here, so don't pay attention to that. Just pay attention on this. You will have access to the catalog called MNT, where usually we will be mounting our drives and to the folder called users, where we will have a hive and the warehouse, which we are discussing. And here we are going to have a, our managed tables. So that's how it looks like. It's OK. It's, it's useful. Sometimes it's quicker to check something with the DBFS using that explorer, but that's not going to be a main way of exploring the storage. Way more frequently, we'll be using notebooks for that purpose. So let's see how this looks like. So you can do this as well. I, I'm using display and DBUTs about the DBUTs we'll be learning in the next part, but just the basic usage of it is very simple. But for this purpose, I need to have a cluster up and running. So let me start it. And once it's up and running, we can hit Control Enter. And now we see more folders, including Databricks datasets or DBFS users that we have seen before. So that's how it looks like. This is the root folder. If we would like to see what is in the users, then it will be enough just to add this name into the path. So I will copy that and let me add user. And here we have, let me add another folder, which is Hive and another, which is called Warehouse. And we get the same results through the, DB, as the, through the DBFS Explorer. What is important is that the path can but doesn't have to start with the DBFS and you will get the same results. So now let's go to the last part of this episode of this part. It's probably the shortest part in the series. And let's explore a bit the Databricks default datasets. I have separated notebook prepared for this occasion. So if I would like to list a Databricks datasets, the way of doing that is exactly the same. And those are datasets available in the Databricks by default. So everyone has it. And there are plenty of them. I don't know all of them. I know a couple of them, like something about COVID. I was not playing with it. About airlines. This is about airlines as well. And you see it. Some flights, flowers, a lot of them. IoT, IoT stream. And then you will have some NG New York City taxis, uh, online retail, uh, pretty a lot of them. So you can play around with it and explore. Maybe you will find something very interesting for you. It always helps to learn. When it's going about me, they are actually free, which I'm using pretty frequently. And the first one is about the New York City taxi. I like that data set because it's actually pretty large. And having a large data set, this creates some complication with which you need to deal with. So you are learning more. And there are some subfolders. In few that on some data sets, you will have a text file with some description about that data set. So we can actually display that text, that description. And sometimes they will tell you from where they took a data set or what is it about. The description is not the greatest. For instance, they could have a data model included in the data, data description, but they don't have it. Anyway, nothing to complain. And we can go to the subfolder and see a data about the yellow taxis in the New York City. And we will see that there will be a lot CSV, which are compressed, but in the PySpark or in the Databricks, the compression doesn't mean anything besides that it takes less space. Handling that is exactly the same as uncompressed files. So we will see a lot of files, a lot of CSVs here with the data about the taxis. And if we would like to display the content of that, the, that file, which essentially we'll be learning in the few next episodes, because there is plenty of options of doing that. So that's how it looks like. This is the first data set. So vendor ID, pickup date, drop of date, passenger count, pretty interesting. Plus again, this is quite big, quite large data sets, which is really cool. Another data set, which I'm using frequently is about the retail organization. And that's how it looks like. We are going to have more folders here, like about customers, products, sales orders. So this is cool because based on that, you can create a number of tables and you can experiment with join different aggregations. This is actually like it's, it's fake data. It's not real data, according to the description. But with that, you can really practice merging and join, joining data in different ways. And there is also some readme. 
and data set has been generated by the Databricks and the description of the different folders. So this is pretty cool. And the last, which I'm using frequently, I find myself using frequently, is this one, ASA Airlines, and very similar to the taxis, big data set about different flights, which year, month, day, and so on. You will have here also information about the delay, a flight number. I don't know if it's a real or fake. It can be it can be actually real because this data is usually public. And that's it when it's going about what's the DBFS. We have seen how it looks like. We learned a bit of theory. We saw DBFS Explorer and we now saw how easily it is to access it through the notebooks. And in the next episode, we will be exploring DBUTs. Cheers.